Good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday night service at Valley Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Serrano, and uh, you, we're glad that you could join us this evening. Uh, I'm going to uh, bring a message called Broken Vessels tonight. Broken Vessels, and it's the story of an earthen vessel, a alabaster box, and a pitcher, ordinary, ordinary items. Uh, that it became extraordinary by being broken. And they are here preserving the Word of God for us to see. And uh, I pray that the message will encourage you to examine yourself and uh, see if there's anything that shouldn't be there in your life, in your relationship, uh, that will come between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that it will be a blessing to you. And so we're going to pray, and then I'll read the scripture, okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, this evening, Lord God, for the privilege to uh, take your word throughout the airwaves, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that the word of God is going throughout all the airwaves, not only here in our country, but throughout the world. We continue to pray, Father, for uh, the, the welfare of our country, of the world, of our government, of our congregation. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you um, help us to see, Lord God, that as believers we need to be broken so that you can use us for your service. And I pray now, Holy Spirit of God, that you bless God's holy word and that you lead and guide and direct. We ask it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, before we start, I'd just like to tell a congregation of Valley Baptist Church that we miss you. And um, we can't wait till we're together again to worship together. Um, under the current circumstances, um, we're not able to meet the guidelines just yet. So please help me to pray and ask God what he wants us to do. And so we'll continue ministering to you uh, as long as we have to uh, through this medium right here that we're using right now. All right, so let's go to the book of Job, the book of Job, chapter number two, book of Job, chapter number two for the first reading. We're going to have three, three places to read. And the first one is Job, chapter number two. And I told you that this is the story of three earthen vessels, three earthen vessels. OK. You remember the story of Job. God uh, gave uh, Satan permission to test Job. And uh, Job was tested, and in the end, he came out as gold. But through the testing, he went through a lot of difficulties. And this is one of the difficulties when he uh, he lost everything, um, but he still had his life. And though uh, he was sick, uh, God did not allow Satan to take his life away from him. So here he is, sick. Notice. Take notice of something that comforts him. And when you think of comforting, think of people that are broken because they lost loved ones, people that have ha have went through difficulties in their life, and you are trying to comfort them. What brings comfort to a person when they've gone through a calamity in their life? As a um, El Paso Police Department chaplain, when I would get called out, to a house where uh, someone had passed away, a lot of times I didn't do anything but just stand there. It was very difficult to comfort a person, the mother, the father, who was obviously very, very shaken. They're crying, and it's, they almost don't want any comfort. And at those situations, all I could do was just stand next to them and let them know that I was there, and I would pray with them. And so here's Jove. He's in very bad health right now. And look at the condition that he's in right now. Job chapter 2 and verse number 7. The Bible says, So went Satan from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So he had boils from the sole of his feet. You know, I don't know about you, but... Just having uh, uh, some kind of irritation in one of your feet, whether it be a callus or other type of uh, injury, 
You can't walk on it. You can't put any pressure on it. And that's just your foot. But Job had boils uh, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head and his scalp. He was full of boils. Now, if you never had a boil, a boil starts in the... Um, and the, uh, uh, where, the, where, the, where the hair follicles are, okay, they get contaminated and they get infected and a red blotch begins to uh, rise up. And after a few days, pus begins to come out of the little hair follicle, okay? And so he is covered with boils from feet to head. And notice what brought him comfort at that particular moment. Verse number eight. And he took him a pot chart to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. And he sat down among the ashes. It was a piece of a pot chart. It was a piece of a vessel. A broken piece of a vessel. A vessel that was probably used at one time to uh, carry fluid. Uh, maybe it could have been a pan. Or a, a, a vessel to carry uh, water in. We don't know what kind of vessel it was, but we know that it was an earthen vessel, okay? Because that's what they made it out of. And so the fact that it was a pot chart it meant that at one time that vessel was whole, it was complete. But now it was broken. And he picked up a piece of that broken vessel, a pot chart. That's what a, 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 a piece of a broken vessel is. And he would take that and scrape his, in his boils. Uh, he was probably very itchy. And at this time, as he's scraping himself with all, all over, and he sat down among the ashes. And so the ashes is a form of mourning. Uh, a form of uh, being in uh, in uh, repentant attitude for the Jewish people, but to be scraping yourself with a piece of pottery that brings you comfort when you scratch your boils. That's the only thing in the world, right there and then, that was bringing him comfort. And when you think about the misery that a boil can bring to you. Uh, oozing, burning, boiling oil. The only source of relief that he got was found in a piece of broken pottery. And this shows us that God uses broken vessels to provide relief and comfort from trials of affliction. God provides broken vessels to provide relief and comfort in the trials of affliction. If you haven't realized it by now, you, as an individual, you are a vessel. You are a earthen vessel. We were all made by God from the dust of the earth. We are earthen vessels. And a whole vessel at one time would have brought Job no relief. If, if all there was was a complete vessel, it would have brought no relief to him. Only a piece of broken vessel was the only thing that was bringing him relief at the particular moment. We don't know if the vessel at one time was a beautiful vessel. We don't know if it was a useful vessel uh, before it was broken. Maybe it was, but right now, the only one that he could find to bring in comfort was a broken vessel. In our churches, there might be many vessels there are many beautiful vessels, many valuable vessels, many faithful vessels, many serving vessels, but none that matter to people who are suffering. None of those can come for someone who is suffering. People who feel that they have lost everything and who are miserable, like Job was here at this time in his life, and who have come to feel worthless and are cast aside by the world, his, his friends came to uh, literally condemn him, uh, accusing him of being a sinner 
And the reason he was being tried is because he was hiding sin. So they, they were not a comfort to him. They were not a source of comfort. Even though Job's friends were complete vessels, they could bring no comfort to him. They could only bring accusations. And that was not comforting to him. The only vessels that can help when there are broken vessels, the only vessels that can help are broken vessels. The only Christians who can help are broken vessels. Keep your finger here and go with me. Actually, don't keep your finger there, but go with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. And notice it with me, verses uh, 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. The Bible says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort with with we ourselves are comforted of our God. You see, when God, when we have gone through difficult times like Job was going through, maybe a time at a hospital, maybe a time being sick at home, uh, God, who is the God of hope, comfort, He comforts us. And the reason He comforts us is so that when we see people who are like Job in those situations, because God has comforted us, then we can comfort them with the same comfort. The, the verse says, "With uh, by the by the comfort with with we ourselves are comforted of God. By the same comfort that we receive from God, that same comfort we are to share it with those that are going through difficult situations." And it's interesting to me that Job here being one of the wealthiest men in that time period, be having very wealthy friends, they were lacking absolutely nothing in the world. They came to visit him probably uh, very well dressed, very healthy, uh, with, their, with their camel dromedaries and their entourages, and yet, none of those things brought comfort to Job. The only thing that brought comfort to Job was a broken piece of pottery, a broken vessel. Okay, so that's vessel number one that we see uh, tonight. Go with me to the book of the Judges, chapter 7. Judges, chapter 7, and we're going to look at our second broken vessel judges chapter 7 judges chapter 7 and I want you to see with me verse 16 and 17 judges 7 16 and 17 the Bible says in verse 7 chapter 7 verse 16 and 17 here's uh, Gideon and the Bible says, he and he divided the 300 men onto three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And you remember the story, God raised up Gideon uh, to go and fight for the children of Israel. And he started out with 32,000 men, and God reduced them to 300 faithful men who were not afraid to fight. And Gideon took these 300 men, and the Bible says that he divided them, 300 men, into three companies. So three companies of 100 men each. And what were the weapons to go to war? The weapons to go to war were a one trumpet in every man's hand, and empty pitchers, empty pitchers, there is your earthen vessel. And inside the pitchers, there were lamps 
Notice with me, verse 16, And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. Now, this is amazing to me. He started out with 32,000 men. Most of them were afraid and went back home. And uh, God reduced them finally to 300. And as I'm looking at verse 16 here, do you see any weapons of war here? Do you? A trumpet is not, I mean, it's a, it's a weapon of war in the sense that you can give commands for the army to move forward or to uh, attack or to retreat. But I don't see that as a, a something that you fight somebody that has a sword. And what about the pitcher? The pitcher, you can carry water in it. It'll keep you alive in the desert. But I don't see it as a weapon. You could probably hit somebody over the head with it. But it wouldn't stand a chance against a sword or a spear. What about the lamp? What could you do with a lamp? You could set the enemies. You can sneak upon the enemy. Maybe set their tents on fire. That would be a form of a weapon. But in the end, you would have to face a sword. And so, isn't it amazing what God uses? God uses equipment like this so that when the victory comes, He can get all the glory because God is not going to have anyone glory before Him. He will receive all the glory. Look at verse number 17. So here's the action that they were to take with the trumpet, the pitcher, and the lamp. So they got a trumpet, and then they have a, a pitcher, and inside the pitcher, there is a lamp, an oil lamp, and it's lit. All right? So, verse 17. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise, and behold, when I come out to the outside of the camp, it shall be that thou shalt do, that as I do, so shall ye do. So watch me. When we get around the camp of the enemy, you just watch what I do and you do exactly like I do. When I blow with a trumpet and all and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets. So when you hear me blow the trumpet, then you blow the trumpet. And say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Okay? So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp and the beginning of the middle watch. And the beginning of the middle watch. There's three watches. So this would be uh, between uh, two, two to six. Okay? This is when everybody's in their deep sleep. And so they came in the middle watch and they blew and and they the beginning of the middle watch and they had but newly set the watch so it was barely 2 a.m. and they and they break their pictures that were in their hands so they broke the pictures thereby exposing the light inside of the pictures and the three companies blew the trumpet so there was light and then the trumpets and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets on the right hand to blow with all and they cry the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. All right. So uh, we see here their individual weapons, one trumpet, one lamp and one pitcher. They surrounded the enemy and they sounded their trumpets and then they broke the pitchers, which held the lamps inside and yelled the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The enemy was so scared uh, when they saw suddenly there was light all around them. And then the trumpets sounded. And then they yelled the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And the enemy was so scared that they ran and cried and fled in their confusion. They began to turn on each other and to kill each other. So God gave the victory. What did God use to receive the victory? 
God used broken vessels to give the light in the darkness. Isn't that amazing? God used broken vessels to give the lights. The pictures that were broken were not originally meant to be broken. Remember, an earthen vessel was used to carry liquid. In this case, probably water. They were not useless before they were broken. They carry light in them. But only after they were broken was the light revealed. Only after they were broken was the light revealed. An unbroken vessel conceals the light, but a broken vessel reveals the light. Too many Christians hide the light of the Word of God in their hearts, and that's where it stays. They just hide it. We need to be broken vessels to shine the light into this dark world. We need to say, the Lord, thy will be done. Look at the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew, chapter number 5. Matthew, chapter number 5. And look at verse 14. Matthew 5 and verse number 14. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 5, in verse number 14, Jesus is speaking here, and he's speaking to his disciples, and he says to them, Ye, you, believers, believers, you, ye, are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. If you put a, a candle under a bushel, then what you're doing is you're hiding the lights. You're not allowing the light to be revealed. Instead, you put the you put it on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. In the same manner, Jesus says in verse 16, Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men, they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. We need to give the light of the gospel. We cannot hide the gospel because if we don't give the gospel out, we who are earthen vessels have this treasure inside of us. And if we don't reveal that light to the world, then the world will remain in darkness. And we're going to be just like that one servant who instead of investing his talents, he took his one talent and he went and hid it under the earth. And when Jesus came back to make accounts, he said, Lord, here's your one talent. I was afraid and I and I went in and hid it on the earth. So here's your one talent. Did Jesus command him for that? No, he did not command him for that. He 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 uh he rebuked them because he was unfaithful servants. We don't want to be unfaithful servants. We need not only to be broken vessels to comfort others, but we need to reveal the light that is inside of us to a dark world because the vessels are us. We are the vessels. And you'll see that in a minute. So we looked at the piece of pottery that brought comfort. We saw the, the piece of pottery that brought victory. But it didn't bring victory until it was broken. The pottery didn't bring comfort to Job until it was broken. Two broken pieces of pottery. Broken vessels. Number three, look at Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And look with me at verse number three. Mark 14 and verse number three. Mark 14 and verse number 3, the Bible says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, Jesus, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And the Bible says, 
And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was that? Why, what, why was this waste of the ointment made? They were saying that the, the ointment, putting it on the head of Jesus was a waste. Let me tell you something. Nothing that you do in the name of Jesus is a waste. Verse 5, for it might have been sold for one, uh, for more than 300 pence. It was very valuable. And have been given to the poor and they murmur against her. They got mad at this lady because she wasted, but Jesus didn't consider it a waste. But she wasted, they said, uh, this beautiful alabaster box. Now, alabaster it's a precious stone, sort of like marble, but more fragile. The Bible tells us here that it was worth that it was worth more than 300 pence. To give you an idea, one pence was one day's uh, salary, one day's wages for a man to work. So it was worth more than 300. So the value of this. Uh, alabaster box with its ointment was worth an entire year an entire year of wages for a man to work that was the value of it not only was it a value uh, because of what it held but the ointment itself according to verse number three was very precious very aromatic and so she surrendered this alabaster box with his ointment she surrendered it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It, it didn't matter that it was 300 pence to her. It, yes, it was valuable, and people said it was valuable, but she was giving it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he not worth more than 300 pence? Is he not worth more than that for going to the cross for us? How, could, we, could we ever repay what the Lord Jesus did for us on the cross? Of course not. Remember, nothing that you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is a waste. Nothing. It is well received by the Lord Jesus Christ. It was made even more valuable when it released its precious ointment to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to remember, Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. He's going to have a crown of thorns pressed upon his head till he bleeds. He's going to be whipped with a cat of nine tails. His skin is going to be separated. They're going to put a robe which is going to stick to his back. And then they're going to yank it off after it's stuck to his back. Jesus is going to bleed. He's going to sweat. the body goes to a very traumatic experience. And this lady was anointing him so that when he was on the cross, all he would smell would be the precious ointments. He wouldn't smell the blood. He wouldn't smell the sweat. He wouldn't smell anything else but the beautiful fragrance. Believe me, that was not wasted on the Lord Jesus Christ. The ointment was precious, but until it was broken, it wasn't precious until it was broken. It didn't become precious until it was broken and release the fragrance. In the book of Psalm 38, verse 18, the Bible says, The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Contrite means crushed and powder broken. The child of God, like the broken alabaster box, filled with a sweet perfume, when the only value that it sees is doing those things that honor gods. Some might be filled with indignation. The Bible says in verse 5 that 
uh, in verse 4 that, that some had indignation. Some were filled with indignation because she did this. But it doesn't matter what people think or say. Some feel with indignation when they see what you do to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. Let them think whatever they want to think. You keep serving the Lord with all your heart. The woman could have brought the box and said how expensive it was. She could have come to that meeting and said, look, look at this beautiful box. Isn't it beautiful? Hey, let me give you a little sniff. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, she could have done that. But that wouldn't have made it precious. It became precious when it was broken and revealed its beautiful fragrance and the purpose for which it was placed upon the Lord's head to anoint him for his burial and resurrection. In each case, the vessels that we saw even valuable vessels, they were not valuable until they were broken. God, they did not bring relief until they were broken. They were not be, be able to bring comfort until they were broken. They were not able to bring a sweet smelling fragrance until they were broken. You want to be used of God? You want to serve Him? You must be a broken vessel. If you want to see revival in our country, in our churches, and in 2020, revival has to start with you personally, individually. When you become a broken vessel for the Lord and He revives you, it will spread. But you cannot be a broken vessel. You can be a beautiful vessel. But if you're only beautiful in the outward and inside you're carrying greed, selfishness, covetousness, anger, pride, God can't use you. You need to come before the Lord as a broken vessel. Pray and ask God to use you. And ask Him to remove every obstacle that is in your life that is stopping you from being used by God as a broken vessel. Whatever it is, God can't use you until you let go of those things. You have to let go of those things. Are you a broken vessel this evening? One more scripture. I want you to notice. One more scripture. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Look at verses 6 and 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7, the Bible says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have repented of your sins and you have received Jesus as your Savior, the Bible says right here that the light of God is shining in you. And you have that light of God inside of you and that same light needs to go out look at verse 6 for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts for what purpose you might ask has the light shined in our hearts look what it says to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ the light that you have received is not for you to hide the light that you have received is for you to give out because the world lies in darkness and you and I are the lights. We need to bring that light out into the world 
Look at verse number 7. Where does this light reside? But we have this treasure. The light is a treasure because the treasure is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have it inside of us. That is the light. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You and me are the earthen vessels and we carry the gospel. We know the truth. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. God plays that light into us, the light of the gospel. We're to give that light out. We can't hide it. We can't put it under a bushel. We have to let, let it shine. Okay? The children have a little song that says, uh, let it shine, let it shine. Let it sh Don't let the devil it out. Don't let the devil it out. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Are you shining the light of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world? I know what you're saying. Right now we can't. I know. But the stay-at-home uh, guidelines expire this Thursday. We're able to go out again. And we're going to see a lot of people. Be prepared to give the light of the gospel. Carry gospel tracts with you. Begin to give it out. The Lord is coming back soon. We, we have to get with it. Every opportunity that God gives us, we need to give the gospel to our family members, to our neighbors, co-workers, extended families. We need to give it out. Be a light for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to carry the light of the gospel inside of us. Thank you also for the privilege to be able to take it out and give it out. Father, I pray that you examine our hearts and minds, that there be nothing that would be an obstacle, Lord God, that you would remove anything that would interfere with us giving the gospel, whether that object or, or uh, obstacle is fear, Remove it, Lord God. Whether it's pride, remove it, Lord God. Whatever is holding us back from giving it out, please, Father God, set our souls on fire to give the light of the gospel to this dark, dark world. And we pray for a harvest of souls, Lord, for your glory. And Father, we continue praying for our government and for our, uh, those that are in the front lines, Father God, taking care of the sick, comfort those that have lost families, uh, and members of the families, Lord God. And Father God, those that are sick at home, please comfort them. And we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to be able to worship uh, through social media, Lord God. And we look forward to the day where we can reunite together again and worship you, worship you together, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Father. And we ask these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you. You are dismissed.